Hi, my name is Anne Guile, it rhymes with smile, and I prepared this video about preparing for the Coach Knowledge Assessment, or CKA, of the International Coach Federation as a way of giving back to the profession of coaching. The ICF's Coach Knowledge Assessment, also called the CKA, is required once for all ICF members when first applying for or renewing their credential. The purpose is to demonstrate your knowledge of the ICF core competencies, the ICF Code of Ethics, and the ICF definition of coaching, which is at the top of the Code of Ethics. You may also want to review a cool document called the ICF Core Competencies Rating Levels. It's a table that shows you what each one of the core competencies looks and feels like at the ACC, PCC, and MCC levels. Here's what to expect when you take the Coach Knowledge Assessment. There are about 155 multiple choice questions. It's online and it takes about two to three hours to complete. It must be completed in one sitting and there is a three hour time limit. At the beginning, it tells you what you need for a passing score. It's currently 70%, but the ICF reserves the right to change that. And you'll be told at the end of the Coach Knowledge Assessment whether you passed. You don't have to wait to find out. If you don't pass, you can retake a different version of the test for a fee. It's currently $75, but the ICF reserves the right to change that too. The Coach Knowledge Assessment covers five broad domains, setting the foundation, co-creating the relationship, communicating effectively, facilitating learning and results, and coaching foundations and knowledge. Here's a tip or a secret that they don't make obvious. The Coach Knowledge Assessment's five broad domains, setting the foundation, co-creating the relationship, communicating effectively, facilitating learning and results, and coaching foundations and knowledge, correlate to the ICF core competencies, setting the foundation, co-creating the relationship, communicating effectively, and facilitating and learning results. That last one, coaching foundations and knowledge, I'll address in a minute. So why is knowing this secret or tip so valuable? The way the ICF core competencies are arranged loosely correlates to the order in which things occur in a session or over the arc of a coaching relationship. So knowing when in a session something is happening can influence your answer to a given question. On the exam, the domain is listed for each question or group of questions. This isn't just a header, it's useful information. So just to review, there are 11 ICF core competencies and they're grouped into four categories setting the foundation, co-creating the relationship, communicating effectively, and facilitating learning results. These are the same headers or domains that will show up in the Coach Knowledge Assessment. So if you see a domain of setting the foundation, it's going to be about ethical guidelines, professional standards, and establishing the coaching agreement. If you see co-creating the relationship, it's going to be about establishing trust and intimacy with the client and coaching presence. If you see communicating effectively, it's going to be about active listening, powerful questioning, and direct communication. And if you see facilitating learning and results, those questions are going to be about creating awareness, designing actions, planning and goal setting, and managing progress and accountability. Can you see the flow of how setting the foundation happens at the beginning of a session or at the beginning of a coaching relationship? and that co-creating the relationship is when you're just getting things moving. Communicating effectively is sort of the middle of the session. You're listening actively, asking questions, and communicating, and facilitating learning and results. That happens towards the end of a session or the end of an overall arc of coaching. So those first four domains directly correlate to ICF core competencies. And it tells you a little bit about when it occurs in a coaching session or over the arc of the coaching relationship. So what's that fifth domain? Coaching foundations and knowledge. Remember the purpose of the coach knowledge assessment is to demonstrate knowledge of the core competencies, which are the first four domains, the ICF code of ethics, and the ICF definition of coaching, which is at the top of the code of ethics. That fifth domain, coaching foundations and knowledge, 
covers everything that's left, the ICF definition of coaching and the code of ethics. Plus it covers anything else the ICF feels a coach should know in general about coaching. It's a grab bag. So let's take a sample coach knowledge assessment. These sample questions are taken directly from the ICF's own coach knowledge assessment page. However, if you go through the button at the bottom of the coach knowledge assessment page, it shows you the answers as well as the questions. So if you want to take it as a sample test, do it here. Don't click on the button on the ICF's page or you'll see the answers. So make yourself a little chart or number a sheet of paper from one to five. So let's get started on our sample CKA. Domain, setting the foundation. Question one. The client is a high energy manager with a generally positive outlook. Just before coming to the coaching session, the client was told that their responsibilities are about to drastically change and will no longer be doing the work they are passionate about. The client has come to the session in a particularly negative mood and has expressed the desire to address this situation during today's session. What is the best way for the coach to proceed? A. Ask the client about all of the potential positive outcomes from this situation. B. Remind the client that the agenda for this session was set at the end of the last session. C. Explore the outcomes for the session and ensure that the client and coach are both clear on them. Or D. Point out to the client how extremely important it is to be passionate about the work we do. If you don't have your answer yet, go ahead and press pause, and when you're ready to move forward again, press play. Domain, co-creating the relationship. Question two. A client is explaining a situation to a coach who senses there's more that the client is not sharing. How should the coach approach the situation? A, interrupt the client and ask for greater disclosure. B, Give the client the bottom line read on the situation. C, ask the client's permission to probe a little deeper. D, give the client feedback on the importance of honesty in coaching. Moving forward. Domain, communicating effectively. Question three. When dealing with a client who brings many issues to the table, it is best for the coach to pick the option A, where the coach has the most expertise, B, of asking what the client would like to start with, C, that looks most likely to be handled in the time available, or D, that the coach thinks can do the most good for the client. Moving forward. Domain, facilitating learning and results. Question four, an appropriate role for a coach in goal setting, planning, and prioritizing with a client is A, critiquing and embellishing a client's goals. B, letting the client self-determine the need for goals. C, taking charge of the process to ensure it is completed accurately. Or D, facilitating a process around the client's goal setting, planning, and prioritizing. Moving forward. Domain, coaching foundations and knowledge base. Question five. Every coaching conversation should include A, an action plan. B, an agenda identified by the client. C, review of field work. D, a summary by the coach of the client's progress. Moving forward. At this point, you should have an answer written down for each question. Don't proceed unless you're ready for the spoilers. If you're ready for the answers, here we go. Domain, setting the foundation. Question one. The client is a high energy manager with a generally positive outlook. Just before coming to the coaching session, the client was told that their responsibilities are about to drastically change and will no longer be doing the work they are passionate about. The client has come to the session in a particularly negative mood and has expressed the desire to address this situation during today's session. What is the best way for the coach to proceed? C. 
explore the outcomes for the session, and ensure that the client and coach are both clear on them. This comes from the ICF Core Competencies, Section A, Setting the Foundation, Meeting Ethical Guidelines, and Coming to Agreement with the Prospective and New Client about the Coaching Process. Domain, Co-Creating the Relationship. Question 2. A client is explaining a situation to a coach who senses that there is more that the client is not sharing. How should the coach approach the situation? C. Ask the client's permission to probe a little deeper. This comes from the ICF Core Competencies, Section B, Co-Creating the Relationship. Asks permission to coach client in sensitive new areas. Domain. Communicating effectively. Question 3. When dealing with a client who brings many issues to the table, it is best for the coach to pick the option B of asking what the client would like to start with. This comes from the ICF Core Competencies, Section C, Communicating Effectively. The coach attends to the client and the client's agenda and not to the coach's agenda for the client. The coach asks questions that move the client toward what they desire. Domain, Facilitating Learning and Results, Question 4. An appropriate role for a coach in goal setting, planning, and prioritizing with a client is D, facilitating a process around the client's goal setting, planning, and prioritizing. This comes from the ICF Core Competencies, Section D, Facilitating Learning and Results. Facilitating, planning, and goal setting. Establishes a coaching plan and development goals with the client. Domain. Coaching Foundations and Knowledge Base, Question 5. Every coaching conversation should include B, an agenda identified by the client. Remember that Coaching Foundations and Knowledge Base questions are a grab bag. The answer to this particular question comes from the ICF Core Competencies, Section C, Communicating Effectively. A coach attends to the client and the client's agenda. Just to review the correct answers, are C, C, B, D, B. How many did you get right? Did knowing that tip or secret help you? The idea that the domains are equivalent to the core competencies and also help you know when it occurs in a session? My best suggestions for the coach knowledge assessment are to rely on your training. You're a coach, you know this. Review the core competencies and the domains under which they're grouped. Review the ICF definition of coaching and the code of ethics. And don't forget the ethics FAQs. Take one final look at the core competencies, the code of ethics, and the ethics FAQs before you take the coach knowledge assessment. Make sure you have a good internet connection and that you won't be interrupted. There is a time limit and it must be completed in a single session. You can't save your answers and come back to it. And when you're ready, just take a deep breath and just do it. You're going to be great. You've got this. Good luck and best wishes on passing your coach knowledge assessment. I hope you have a terrific day.